Are you a part-time worker or a contract employee in Canada? What if I told you that being a part-time worker or a contract employee does not necessarily disqualify you from getting a mortgage in Canada? Today, we have an intriguing question from one of our clients and let's call her Sarah. Sarah recently graduated and is making a positive impact as a part-time hospital nurse while picking up a separate travel nursing contract on her days off from the hospital. She has a down payment, but wonders if lenders will disregard her part-time and contract income. Sarah's discovered that the travel contracts can bring in more money than a full-time position. Sarah has saved up a 10% down payment, but she has high student debt. Now, the burning question on her mind is whether or not lenders will disregard her part-time and contract income since she doesn't have one job with full-time hours. Sarah's concern is valid, but in today's video, let's explore the requirements for mortgage eligibility as a part-time worker or contract worker. First, I'm gonna talk about the differences between a part-time employee and a contract worker, the credit score you need, the down payment requirements, and all the other things you need to consider for mortgage eligibility. I'll also share some tips for you at the end of the video that you do not want to miss. What's up guys, my name is Felix Chan, Calgary Realtor and Mortgage Broker with Real Broker Canada. Let's go. First, a few things to understand. Part-time income is considered variable income. Variable income is defined as income that's received in inconsistent intervals or may fluctuate at different pay periods. Some examples include uh, seasonal income, casual income with no guaranteed hours, a second job, commission income, self-employed income like yours truly, and if you are a contractor. Part-time could mean that you work less than 37 hours a week, depending on your employer, and this is confirmed by a job letter from them. Part-time workers usually do not have the same benefits as full-time employees, like health coverages uh, or paid time off. In order for lenders to use your part-time income towards qualifying for your mortgage, you will need to show a two-year history as reported on your tax returns. Lenders will ask for your T1 generals, which has a breakdown of all your income and your notice of assessment or NOA, and they'll look at line 150, which is your taxable income for the year. The second thing to understand is contract workers are considered self-employed borrowers. Contract employment is when you work on specific projects or assignments for a predetermined period. This could be a few weeks, months, or even years. As a contract worker, you do not have the same long-term job security as salaried full-time position with a company because as a contractor, you were the first one to get fired from the company before they lay off salaried workers. This is the reason why lenders require two years history to show stability. Now, contractors can be professionals or white collar where they are not a full-time salaried employee with benefits, but on contract with a specific company or companies. I've done many mortgages for engineers, people in IT, uh, dentists, doctors, lawyers, and other professionals. Like part-time income, Sarah will need to show a two-year history of her income from her tax returns. If Sarah does not have a two-year history of income showing on her tax returns, she will need to wait until she can do that. Now, what if you are a commission income earner? The self-employed program does not include commission income earners. The solution is very easy. Start a corporation and pay yourself dividends or a salary from your corporation. This is what I've done for the past 10 years and getting a mortgage isn't an issue for me. Here's the eligibility requirements for those that are self-employed like Sarah. And this goes the same with part-time income too. Credit. Now your credit score must be 680 or higher. And by the way, if you want to know the best credit score to buy a house, then watch my video up here. Other things about credit lenders are looking for is a minimum of two types of credit for at least two years, like two credit cards or even one car loan and a credit card or one line of credit and one credit card as long as they are active, meaning you have to be using it at least once a month. No defaults on a mortgage for the past seven years or bankruptcies. Down payment. A minimum of 10% down payment is required. Now, 5% of that must come from your own savings, which you will have to provide a 90-day history for, 
and uh, it is okay if you have saved this money up from the last few months. The other 5% may be gifted from immediate family members or a legal relationship like your spouse. In our case with Sarah, she has saved up 10% down of her own money. So she is hitting the down payment requirements to buy a home. Other things Sarah should know about being a self-employed borrower, she cannot be owing any income taxes. Her spouse can be a guarantor, well, when she gets hitched. Lenders will want to see that you've been in the industry for at least two years. So if Sarah within the last two years switches hospitals or companies being at a, being a traveling nurse, but still a nurse at both jobs, that is acceptable. There are documents she will need to provide, but that is outside of the scope of me trying to keep this video simple and easy to understand. I will always say that it is never too early to get started with your homework on how to get a mortgage. In fact, you should be looking into your mortgage financing now, even if you're not ready to buy for another year. The reason why is because if you have bruised credit or you are shy of a down payment or any other reason, you wouldn't know that until you speak to a professional. Come up with a game plan and then you'll have time to fix any deficiencies on your application between now and in the future uh, when you're ready to buy a home. If you are proactive, it will pay off in the long run. So if you're interested in getting an assessment done, feel free to reach out to our team in the description below and I will make sure you're looked after. Understand that lenders are looking at the overall financial picture of Sarah's application. Income and debt is only a small part of it. Other things I mentioned is credit score, your down payment, um, the source of your down payment and employment history. Now that said, for you nerds trying to figure out how much you can qualify for on a, for a mortgage based on what you see on the internet, don't bother. Save yourself the time and headache and just talk to a professional. Tip, full-time employment as an option. Now, if you really wanna play it safe about your mortgage eligib eligib eligibility as a part-time worker or contract employee, Try transitioning into a full-time salaried employee, and this can significantly improve your chance of getting a mortgage. Once you've completed a probationary period and secured a full-time position, lenders often see it as a positive sign. Full-time employment provides more stable income and employment history, which lenders typically prefer when evaluating mortgage applications. And instead of providing a two-year history, all you need is to be off your probationary period provide a recent pay stub and a job letter. So if it's a viable option for you, it might be worth exploring the path of full-time employment to enhance your mortgage eligibility. Getting a mortgage as a part-time worker or contract employee in Canada may have its challenges, but it's not impossible. It's important to remember that transitioning to a full-time salary employee can boost your eligibility. The key is to explore your options and seek guidance from good mortgage brokers and don't bother trying to figure it out yourself. So don't let your employment status discourage you from achieving your dream of home ownership. With determination, the right support, and a solid plan in place, you can navigate the mortgage landscape successfully. All you should be doing is focusing on choosing a good mortgage broker and leave everything else up to them. A good mortgage broker will always educate you on the process and tell you what the next steps are. By the way, I'm in Calgary, Alberta, and I have a mortgage and real estate team here. But if you're watching this um, and you need either a mortgage or a real estate professional outside of Alberta, let me know because I have a team that kind of spans almost across Canada. Our contact info is in the description. And if you like this content, feel free to check us out at Live Inner City on Instagram. And if you found this valuable, I would love your support if you took two seconds to smash the like button. My name is Felix Chan, Calgary realtor and mortgage broker with Real Broker and we'll see you in the next video.